G'day all you frothers, it's Will here from Flow Mountain Bike and this is the all new Canyon Strive. Now the Strive is Canyon's flagship enduro race bike. It's built around 29 inch wheels and a full carbon frame. But while the new bike may look similar to its predecessor, this bike is almost entirely new from tip to tail. For a start, it has more travel. Rear suspension has lifted from 150 to 160 millimeters, and that's paired to a 170 mil travel fork up front. It's also much beefier with bigger tube profiles that are said to improve front triangle stiffness by 25%. The new Strive does carry over the shapeshifter system from the old bike, and this allows you to adjust the suspension and the geometry on the fly via a remote up at the handlebar. This activates a small two position gas spring, which alters the position of the rear shock, limiting the rear travel to 140 millimeters while also lifting the BB by 15 mil and steepening the angles by one and a half degrees. It's a bit like having a really big geometry flip chip, which you can activate with your thumb while riding. Speaking of geometry, the new Strive has some huge updates over the old bike. For a start, the head angle has slackened out by three full degrees. It is now as slack as the Sender downhill bike with a 63 degree head angle. The seat tube angle does exactly the opposite and that steepens to 76.5 degrees. The reach is also much longer. On the medium size that I've been testing here, it gets a whopping 480 millimeter reach. And not only is that 40 mil longer than the old bike, it's actually the same length as a large size Norco range, which is a bike that isn't exactly known for being particularly petite. Now you can fine tune the cockpit length. The Canyon has built in the same reach adjusting headset that we first saw in the Sender downhill bike. Complete bikes will come from the factory in the neutral position, though by fitting offset headset cups, riders will be able to adjust the reach by five millimeters each way. Otherwise, the stack height, BB drop, and chainstay length are pretty much identical to the old Strive. It's worth pointing out here that Canyon hasn't built the Strive with size-specific rear ends, so you've got the same 435 millimeter rear center length on all four frame sizes. To start off with, there will only be two models in the 2022 Canyon Strive lineup. The bike we've been testing here is the top of the range model. This is the Canyon Strive CFR. It's got Fox factory suspension with a 38 grip two fork and a float X2 shock. We've got a Shimano XTR group set with carbon race face next R cranks. There's a custom DT Swiss wheel set with tough alloy rims and an aggressive Maxxis tire combo with Exo Plus tire casings. Confirmed weight for our Canyon Strive CFR test bike is 15.84 kilos, which is around a kilo and a half heavier than the old bike. It's worth noting here that the new frame is actually claimed to be 300 grams heavier than the old bike, though that's understandable given the stiffness improvements and the fact that this bike is much longer and slacker than its predecessor. At 175 centimeters tall, I was sent a medium size in the Canyon Strive to test out. There's no doubt that it is a huge bike though, and in looking at the size chart, a rider of my height does have the option to downsize to a small, which still has a substantial 455 millimeter reach. That said, I was able to get used to the medium after the first few rides. It is plenty comfortable on the trail and there's plenty of clearance even with that big 170 mil travel dropper post. Still, it's important to note that the new Strive is vastly longer and slacker than the old bike. And that means riders who are on the border between two sizes may want to look at sizing down rather than up. Once you do get to grips with the raked out geometry and the assertive riding position it demands, the Strive is stonkingly quick on the descents. It's remarkably calm and composed at high speeds, giving your brain more time to think and process your next move. The suspension is plush and neutral, and there's a load of traction and damping on tap from the sticky Maxxis tires and the high-tech Fox dampers. It's not quite as supple as a Trek Slash or a Specialized Enduro, but it is active and well supported, especially when you're riding at race pace. Despite having a lot of bike underneath you, the Strive didn't turn out to be as cumbersome as I was expecting. 
The 435mm rear centre is very short for a 160mm travel 29er, and that allows you to square off corners as needed, which is an important trait when you're racing blind enduro stages. While it is prone to understeer if you're riding off the back or just cruising along on flatter trails, at speed the Strive initiates turns and changes direction surprisingly well. I've also been really impressed with the shapeshifter system on the Strive. The lever is easy to use and flicking it into the pedal mode not only shortens rear travel to 140mm, it also changes the suspension kinematics by increasing the anti-squat level and decreasing the leverage ratio to provide firmer, more efficient pedaling performance. However, it's really the change in the dynamic geometry which I found to be most beneficial. The extra 15 millimeters of ground clearance is noticeable, and so too is the 78.5 degree effective seat tube angle, which puts you in a more central and powerful pedaling position. Because the shock stays active, the pedal mode is also useful on smoother descents, where you might want a stronger platform for your feet to push off of when pumping through flowier sections. But when things get steep and choppy again, a quick push of the lever drops you back into the full travel shred mode, allowing you to capitalize on the plush suspension and slack geometry. Indeed, it's this split personality performance that really separates the Strive from its competitors. Unlike bikes that feature traditional geometry flip chips, the Strive doesn't force you to choose between the low and slack or the high and steep settings. Instead, the shapeshifter system gives you access to both of those settings right at your fingertips. But while the shapeshifter system does work well, it won't be a flawless solution for every rider. For a start, there's more complexity here. There's another cable added to the cockpit and there are more moving parts. And the higher anti-squat level in the pedal mode means that on really rocky and technical climbs, there is more pedal feedback here where the rear suspension can lack some sensitivity. On those sorts of climbs with lots of square edges, I found myself occasionally wishing for the plush suspension performance of the shred mode, but with the taller ride height of the pedal mode. Now this is unlikely to be a concern for serious enduro races because those sorts of technical climbs are unlikely to feature in time stages. Speaking of climbing, while the riding position is fantastic in the short travel pedal mode, you will notice the draggy tyres and the near 16 kilo weight. And while it is more stable and controlled at high speeds than its predecessor, the new Strive has sacrificed some of that all-round versatility and playfulness that we loved so much about the old bike. It's harder to whip around tight corners, it's less maneuverable on average gradients, and it requires a lot of effort to lift up the front wheel. Unless you have speed on your side and you're really working the suspension, for the most part the Strive just wants to stay glued to the ground. This is to be expected given the Strive's outrageous stability on the descents though, and it will be more than worthwhile for the serious enduro racers out there who live and die by the clock. Now I'll point out here that the full review of the new Canyon Strive is live over at flowmountainbike.com. There's a load more information in there about our experience of testing this new bike, including some comparisons to the Canyon Spectral and the Torque. If you'd like to know more about the new Strive, make sure you hit that link in the video description below. Otherwise that's it from me guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you next time. Tooroo!